This date literally went from zero to wedding ring. I'm not even kidding. Like, this is crazy. I was scared for my life. I have this really tall, really strong, big man in my house by myself. Who knows what can happen? Part of that is also my fault, of course. Como ya la vi, solita, pues me pregunté ¿Qué pasa cuando me bailó? Cerquita, eso fue descomunal Dale, dale, tra, tra, tú sabes cómo es Cómo hacerlo más Hello and hello, welcome back to Time with Tally. Today I have something a little bit new for you all. I'm about to go get ready for the gym, so I figured let's do a get ready with me whilst I also tell you this story. Many of you have probably heard this story on my TikTok. I did delete it a little bit ago, but a lot of my friends have actually told me that I should record it for YouTube. I have so many stories, it's actually ridiculous how many stories I have, so if you want to see more, just let me know. Also today is really exciting because I got my first ever lifting belt in the mail, so I'm going to unbox it with you guys today. I also got straps and ankle straps. I believe that's what they're called. <laughs> let's get into this horror story of a second date. All right, let's get this hair up. All right, so the story begins. I was working a shift at my old job and the guy ended up picking up a shift there. So this day was actually a holiday, I believe. It was like Christmas or something like that. Ooh, this I love it for the gym. It is a skin hydrating beauty balm. For me, I just call it like a tinted sunscreen slash tinted moisturizer. That's what I use. I don't have any one of those like makeup plates that people use to put their foundation on. So I just use the cap. Yeah, I just do that. And then I wet my makeup sponge because I'm not getting up and going to the sink for this. Mm -mm. This is not a tutorial. I don't know why I keep on talking about it. Anyways, not for nothing. He walks in and I was like, okay, I see this man walking in. He kind of looks cute, but mind you, we also still have masks on at this time. This is still during the COVID pandemic. From here up, I was like, okay, he's not too bad looking. He's like 6'2", looks like he's built and his hair was done pretty nicely. So I was like, oh, okay, he kind of looks like he has his stuff together. And I don't ever really do this anymore because I did eventually date one of my coworkers years before that, like not at the same place, somewhere else. And I was just like, yeah, no Never again am I going to date a coworker or anybody that I have worked with type thing. But it's my first time seeing him and I'll probably never see him again because he literally only picked up for that one holiday. We get into like a little bit of a conversation during our break, blah, blah, blah. We seem to have pretty similar views on certain things and are able to have pretty nice discussion. For me, one of the biggest turn-ons is when I can have a long conversation with someone and you're not just a superficial piece of shit. Like, I don't care what your favorite color is. I wanna know, why do you think that the stars align the way that they do? Do you believe in karma? Do you believe in death? destiny and do you believe in fate? What's your thought process on things? So I was like, okay, cool. He seems to have a pretty decent mindset. And I did tell him at the time, this is when I first started my fitness journey, that I was doing keto. This should really be honestly like my first like pink red flag. He was like doing this thing where everything I told him about my life choices literally in the first meeting, I just worked with you for the first time. He was like kind of like nitpicking what I was doing in my life. Like he's like, well, you shouldn't really do that. It's not really temp, it's not good for like long term and all this other stuff. And I was just like, yeah, well, I have this thing. I don't mind a little bit of a challenge. I don't mind when someone, you know, can challenge a thought process that I may have as long as you have a good reason behind it and you address it respectfully, you know? I'm open to listening. I love this kind of stuff. Mental stimulation is sexy to me. What? Yes. But I was like, okay, he's kind of cute, like whatever. And eventually he, you know, asked me for my Snapchat or was it my phone number? I forget. I don't remember. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is either way, it still goes really south. <laughs> so after that point, we end up texting a little bit. We even get into a couple of phone calls. We had been talking for about two weeks straight. Like we would talk every day. The conversation was great, but he still kept on doing that thing, like critiquing and trying to teach me things as if I wasn't older than him. We finally set up our first date. We decided let's go to breakfast. So I decided, okay, let's go to this breakfast spot that I usually go to. I like it. It's a beautiful spot to have conversation because the upstairs is kind of set up like a lounge. We get to the breakfast. Everything is fine and dandy. He's okay. Like nothing too wild. Getting to know you. Again, I'm not taking it too serious. It's the first date. I'm just getting to know you. But I have this feeling. Ladies, there's such thing as intuition. You can read energy. You can feel the waves of the energy and the changes and the things that you need to know about. Trust it. Don't think that you're crazy. So I told myself, I'm like, honestly, this was a good date, whatever. He didn't try to like kiss me or anything afterwards. He paid for my breakfast. I'm like, okay. And he did mention going on a second date. So I was like, okay, great. But there was just something in my gut that was like, we need to do something different with this one. I don't know if it's his personality because he definitely was giving judgmental of other people's lives. And anybody that knows me knows that's 
one of the biggest turnoffs ever. So I'm like, I'm gonna do something different here. I'm actually going to have him meet my friends. I need my friend's second opinion on this man because truthfully, I was 50-50 with him. Conversation was great and everything, but in person, the energy, the vibes, something was off and my spirit wasn't feeling right. I'm gonna see how you are around my friends. I'm gonna see how you are around me when I'm fully 100% myself and the people that also have made me me, okay? So what did we decide to do? I said, okay, our second date, we will have a triple date. <laughs> that may be overwhelming for some people, but he was cool with it. I asked for his opinion first, of course. Basically, I'm gonna pick out, okay? I'm gonna be myself and I'm gonna shove this corn on the cob down my throat so far, it's gonna reach my booty hole, okay? This is where everything takes a turn for the worst. He texts me the day of the seafood boil and we decide, okay, he's like, I kinda wanna spend some more alone time with you first before we go hang out with your friends. And I'm like, okay, like, no, we're, like, that's not, that's not a problem because valid, you know, when you're getting to know somebody, sure, let's spend some more alone time before you jump in with my friends obviously so he gets to my house or whatever he walks in I guess he had stopped at like a local bakery or you know breakfast shop or whatever and he got himself like a breakfast sandwich he starts eating his breakfast sandwich even though we're literally going to seafood boil but hey sometimes I do that whatever I don't think anything of it so he comes in he takes off his shoes we lay down we're sitting on my bed and we're just talking and then we lay down we watch some TV nothing wild okay nothing is happening like there's <laughs> Literally no indication that something is gonna, you know, go bad. And nothing did go bad in the ways that some of you might be thinking. So he doesn't finish his breakfast sandwich or anything. So he just sits it right on top of my dresser. At one point I go to go pee. My bathroom and my kitchen are connected. When I go pee, out of nowhere, I'm hearing the cabinets and my fridge open and close. Don't know why that's happening. I'm thinking I have a ghost, right? Because why would somebody be up in my cabinets and in my fridge without asking me? But I was like, okay, I'm not gonna freak out um, maybe he grabbed some water I'm literally I'm trying my best to not panic because I never invite people over to my house like that this was just one day that I was like you know what I'm gonna do things different never again so I go back into my room and so my bed is set up horizontally so it's like a day bed so the bed's like this he decides to lay like this to face the TV when he gets into the bed he huddles himself up into fetal position and I'm not gonna lie this may make me sound like a terrible person but there is something very emasculating about putting yourself knee to chest in a woman's bed that you've never been in before and it's your second date. The fetal position just gave me the ick. I'm gonna be completely honest. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna freak out or anything. I'm not gonna overthink about anything. I'm just gonna lay down. And I'm a little bit tired. I'm not gonna lie. I woke up early that day. So I tell him I'm getting a little tired, like whatever. He can see like my eyes closing. He says something and then I, like, I look up at him and then he pecks me. And this, this, <laughs> <laughs> this guy has the audacity to then say, yeah, I know that's what you've been waiting for. <laughs> Shut up. I literally, I was ready to cancel. <laughs> Oh my god, he's like really really awkward. So now part of me actually kind of like feels bad for him because I'm like, oh I could just tell you have literally no game or no experience with women. I get it. Okay, no worries. So we continue to watch TV or whatever. I'm like, I feel myself falling asleep. So in the midst of me almost dozing off, I got woken up by a phone ringing and I thought it was my phone, right? Which it was. Both of our phones are next to each other on the bed. He goes to grab the phone. I'm thinking he's gonna grab his phone. No. He grabs my phone and attempts to answer the phone call. And I'm over here laying down. I'm like, He's like, oh, it's just a spam call. So I slowly take my phone out of his hand and I'm like, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, did you just answer my phone? He's like, what? Yeah, I, I can't answer your phone now. Jail, 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 jail. I said, well, I mean, I prefer that you not just for privacy reasons. You never know who could be calling. I, he's like, oh, it's not a big deal. If it was something serious, I'd just give it to you. Absolutely not. I'm already ready to like text the group chat. It's over, right? But I'm one of those people, I'm scared. Who knows? Who knows, this could be Ted Bundy. And next thing you know, I'm in a bag. And that sounds so messed up, but that's literally where my head went. I'm like this nerdy, awkward, quirky dude that has no social skills. I'm very scared. Um, If I reject him right now and tell him to leave my house, who knows what could happen to me? And my group chat did not even get a notification that I was going to RIP. You know, I'm going to text the group chat about him. And I did, I did. I was laying right there, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I tried to like turn my phone or whatever so he wouldn't be able to like see what I was texting. And then he goes, oh, and by the way, why was my name in the group chat? Sir, what? Me, I'm playing stupid, I'm like, mm, what'd you say? <laughs> Guys, I'm not even playing right now. He's like, oh yeah, I, I kind of saw my name in your messages and I was like,
what? He's like, oh, like when you were like dozing off and stuff, you know, you know what? He's like, I saw some of your messages. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, well, the last time I saw you put in your password to your phone, I ended up memorizing it. He said something along the lines about how he wanted to text my group chat to let them know that I was tired, that we probably wouldn't be making it. Not only that, <laughs> then I look at my phone, right? And I see my phone is on do not disturb. I never put my phone on do not disturb. I'm like, excuse me, did you put my phone on do not disturb? And he was like, yeah, you were sleeping. I didn't want them to like bother you. Bother me? Excuse me? Absolutely not. You are breaking so many boundaries at this moment right now. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm trying to think to myself like, okay, this kid's intentions can't be, you know, they, they're in the right place, right? I'm scared for my life. <laughs> so I hadn't texted the group chat in a while because I was just so lost within the sauce with this whole thing. My friends thought that we was fucking. My friends thought that it was going very well. Were they sadly mistaken? Yes. So I proceed to text the group chat just to let them know, just in case today is my day. I let them know like, hey, just so you know, I'm gonna have to do a regroup after this triple date because I don't know what to do with myself right now. And right now I wanna cancel. I don't wanna do this anymore. But then I was like, you know what? You don't have to be with the guy forever. Whether or not I continue to talk to this person or not, I'm getting seafood tonight. That's all I care about. I'm a fat ass and that's fine with me. Mind you, something I also forgot to mention, I had alarm set just in case, cause I was dozing off. I had alarm set for when to get ready and when to leave so I can go pick up my friends to go to the seafood boil. He Turn the alarms off. So nothing really crazy happened after that fact. We just decided, okay, let's go to this date, whatever. I'm driving to this date. So I go pick up my friend and she's like two minutes from me, literally like right down the street. I'm not farting by the way, that is my chair. So he's in my passenger seat. My friends get in the back seat. As a grown ass man that barely knows me, why is your hand on my thigh while I'm driving? Ah! Uh, the <laughs> Oh my God, I almost forgot this part too. Right before that though, right before my friends got in the car, like we're just like chilling there, like talking, whatever, waiting for my friends to come out. Or I went to go grab something in the center console and he like puts his face close to mine and then he goes to peck me again. So he pecks me and then I like kind of like pull away like, cause I'm not, I'm not really with that. I'm like, I'm just doing anything to save my life at this point, right? <laughs> Can you believe this guy really tells me? You didn't let me suck it. Bye. <laughs> suck what my friend he was like you didn't let me like suck on your lip oh my god so we drive up or whatever and i know for a fact any of the music that i'm about to play right now it's gonna be some hood stuff right <laughs> me and my friends we have very out there personalities we in the streets we were very diverse you know people he was giving unseasoned chicken and military dad type thing. I knew that our personalities were not gonna go well together. I really drove up with the passenger princess. That's crazy to me. I really, I don't have a problem with my man putting his hand on my thigh. My problem is, is that I'm already seeing the red flags on the second date and now I'm already pulling away and you are not my man. I don't have that comfortability with you yet. Why are you doing the most? He's literally acting like we are together. If anyone's gonna come at me for like not saying no to the kiss or whatever, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I had fear in my chest and not only that, I didn't wanna like embarrass him and then now I'm stuck with you for the next two hours. I didn't want to make it any more awkward than I already had felt and that would have made it so much worse. We finally get to the seafood boil. So I had already ordered my food and I'm doing my little dancey dance. I'm about to eat this food up. Like, oh, I'm about to shove my face in this. And he looks at both of my friends and goes, seeing her excited like that, it gives me will to live. When I say this was my friend's face, we were sitting in a booth, correct? With me, him, my friend's boyfriend that I had picked up, correct? When I say he was basically sitting on top of me, there was a good, I'm not even exaggerating right now, there was a good two feet between him and my friend's boyfriend. Meanwhile, I'm literally falling off the edge of the bench. He wouldn't let me go. To the point that I didn't even say anything, but my friend's boyfriend noticed how far he was and he was like, hey, yo man, like it's cool. You can push down over here. Like I'm not gonna like do anything to you. The night continues and I'm telling you this, bro, I was so embarrassed to sit next to this this man. He then proudly like promotes during the dinner that he doesn't floss his teeth. Every time he goes to the dentist, the dentist can never tell and they tell him he's doing such a great job when all he does is brush his teeth. Full. My Puerto Ricans know what full means. Like what in the fucking yeast infection are you talking about? Because that's not gonna happen here. No, 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 no. So now I'm like, I gotta dub him quick. Like I gotta, like, I'm embarrassed right now. Right now I think just based off of what he's saying, I'm thinking he may wanna sleep over, right? And he probably thinks that's where this is gonna go. Absolutely not. At the restaurant, I literally told him, I said, oh, 
I think I got the bubble guts. I'm so sorry. I, we're probably just gonna have to schedule that, you know, sleepover for a night at a time. He was like, no, I understand. But I mean, maybe you should have somebody around you to take care of you. I could take care of you. No, <laughs> I'd rather die. We get back to my house and he goes to leave. The second he gets into his car, I go into my house, wait by the window and I see him drive off. Bitch, I do the biggest fucking Yui. I turn around and I get back in my car and I'm like, girl, get you and your boyfriend. I'm spinning the block. Don't go to sleep. So I turn around and two seconds later, I'm, in, I'm at her house and everybody's like, why can we just talk about it? <laughs> I'm just dying because I remember this part where I was like, um, yeah, I have the bubble guts. You know, I don't feel really good. And he's talking about, I can take care of you. And I was, I told him, I said, no, I'm probably going to shit myself. I think it's best that you go home. <laughs> While I'm in the car with my friend and her boyfriend, he texted me like, oh, I had a great time, I had so much fun. At the end of his message, you know what he said? <sighs> he said, ah, I'm gonna tell you a story first. I can't do two things at once. I have ADD. He goes, I don't wanna like freak you out or anything, but I just wanna let you know, like it's so soon, but like maybe even if I can't say that it's love, it feels like it is. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, I can't, um, do that. I told him I had a good night, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was being nice, nothing crazy. And then the next morning I texted him, hey, I can't do this. I don't think that our personalities match. You know what this dude says to me? He's like, oh, why do you think that our personalities don't match? And you know what he does? As the cherry on top of everything, he sends me a scientific research-based article on why opposite personalities are compatible. He sent me the link to a scholarly article trying to change my mind about us. And then not only that, the worst part, when I come home, I find in my bathroom, one of my extra toothbrushes that I have for my guests is used, left on the sink. There's toothpaste in the sink. I think he just wanted to show evidence that he brushes teeth probably. And when I go in my fridge, he had gone in my cabinet, taken a Tupperware and put his breakfast sandwich from the bakery in my fridge. So when's the move in date, I guess. I'm very thankful I never saw him again. That was the worst second day of my life. <laughs> Let's get into this unboxing. I got it all from Upper Gear. This is my wrist straps. Ah! So these are my wrist straps. Ah! So cute! Stop! Shut up! Oh! I love it. Mm, I'm gonna try it on in like two seconds. Hold on. Oh my God! I've been trying to do this new ab exercise with the cable machine to see if it would work. I like to do like these tucks, like these abdominal crunch tucks, and I hate holding the dumbbell in between my feet. It sucks. Oh. So I'm thinking, what if I could do that with the ankle straps on the cable machine? How adorable. They're so cool. I have no idea how to use these. <laughs> I really don't. I feel like these can get a little kinky, you know? Shame. With the Velcro. <laughs> I'm gonna change for the gym in a little bit, but honestly, I don't know what to wear yet, so I'm not gonna make this video longer than it has to be. So, that was my gym makeup. I'll fix my hair and get the outfit on later. I just wanna try this on. <gasps> A que me lo pongo pa' fuera. I'm gonna wear it outside with some heels on. Bye. All right, so I'm just gonna go fix my hair and change for the gym. I will see you guys soon. Who knows, maybe I'll keep it in a clip. Anyways, thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Bye. Algo puro y sincero con formalidad. Ella puso un casting pa' los que valoran.